Hello, my name is Nicole Jorwick and I'm the Senior Director of Public Policy for the ARC of the United States. I'm glad to be with you to give you a little bit of an update on what we're hearing in Washington, D.C. I want to start by again acknowledging the frustration as the pandemic continues and the specific needs of the disability community continue to be ignored. It's a frustration that I personally feel um, and people with disabilities and their families and the workforce are dealing with the same fear and isolation as everybody else, but there are many other layers of stress that the disability community, caregivers and service providers and direct support professionals are facing. And as we're discussing the needs of the community, it just can't go unacknowledged. We right now continue to be in a waiting game. The Senate came back this week, but are focusing on judicial nominations. The House is supposed to be back, um, but have not yet set their return date. We are hearing that they should be back next week, but again, we're not sure. We are hopeful that they come back next week so that we can get to work on package four. Again, as I've said, the House is leading the drafting for package four, and we've heard that there could be a draft as early as the end of this week or early next week. Uh, we will hope to have an outline of the bill, and hopefully I can bring that to you next week. The Congress continues to work on making sure that whatever package four looks like, that it's responsive to the pandemic, and but also targeted, um, so that we can hopefully get a bill that has a good chance of passing both the House and the Senate. There have been letters in the Senate in the past week, led by Senator Warren and Senator Hassan, and, on, uh, and also House letters, bipartisan House letters, um, on the specific needs of the disability community from home community-based service education. Uh, and also in the House letters, the specific funding request for home and community-based grants was included. We're hopeful that these letters, as well as the continued engagement of grassroots advocates all over the country, will mean that the HCBS grant programs included in the Coronavirus Relief for Seniors and People with Disabilities Act become part of package four. As far as other things that have um, already passed, the Paycheck Protection Program loan funding that was included in package three and package um, 3.5, the 3.5 funds have been released and about 50% have been spent. These funds have been helpful as stop gaps for service providers that are working hard to continue to provide services virtually or otherwise. Both package three and package 3.5 included billions of dollars in provider relief and stabilization funds. Over half of those funds have been sent to hospitals and other um, more typical providers that you'd think of and some Medicare providers. However, none of those funds have gone to Medicaid providers or specifically providers of home and community-based services. We have been pressuring the Senate and also have appealed directly to the Health and Human Services uh, Agency Secretary, Secretary Azar, uh, as they are the agency that are in charge of distributing these funds. We know that HCBS providers need these funds um, and we'll, we will remain diligent on making sure that those funds get released. We hope to hear more news by next week. Every week it seems like there's another issue with the stimulus payments that were included in the COVID-19 package three and how people with disabilities will access those funds and unfortunately this week is no different. This week we learned that children who receive Social Security or SSI are not going to get automatic stimulus payments so their parents will not get automatic stimulus payments of $500. We will work on advocacy directed at the Social Security Administration to get a fix like we've been able to get fixes on several of these issues. But in the meantime, we encourage anyone who have not gotten payments for their children who may be on SSI to reach out to your members of Congress to highlight this issue. We continue uh, to monitor issues at the state level that are aris arising on uh, care rationing and hospital, hospital visitation policies. It's very important that people with disabilities are protected and their, their unique communication and other needs are respected in the process. We continue to push for HCBS or home and community-based services funding to support people to stay home right now because unfortunately right now, it's literally can be a matter of, of life and death. We know that people with disabilities are at even higher rates of infection and death in nursing homes and other congregate settings. So we really know that we need to see these funding streams increase. HCBS providers and the direct support professionals that provide those services are literally on the front line and direct support professionals are working under extremely difficult and sometimes dangerous conditions because of their lack of access to PPE. 
We know that most community programs have completely closed, creating an increased need for in-home and other virtual support. These are just some of the reasons why we need to continue to share our stories. Please continue to do so, even in the frustration. The pen is on paper in Congress right now, and we have to make sure our voices are heard. Thank you and be well.